Hi guys, Miss Shadow here. We're back with more of The Terrible Two Get Worse by Jory John and Matt Burnett, illustrated by Kevin Cornell. We were on chapter 14, so let's get started. Project nine, model making. In Miss Shandy's social studies class, Josh was eating a bag of chips. Josh said, Miss Shandy, you can't eat chips in class. Actually, said Josh, I have to eat chips. It's for my blood sugar. He licked orange dust from his fingers one by one. Then he crinkled up the bag, stuffed it in his pocket, and pulled out a pudding cup. Josh, said Miss Shandy. Miss Shandy, said Josh, if I don't eat this pudding cup, I could faint. Put it away, Josh, said Miss Shandy. But I'm a school helper, said Josh. And I don't care, said Miss Shandy. This position has power now. It's not like when he, Josh nodded toward Niles, was doing it. Three, said Miss Shandy. Two, but where am I supposed to put an open pudding cup? Not my problem. One, Josh gently put the pudding cup inside his backpack and take off that hat. Josh removed his cadet cap and fluffed up his hair. Okay, Miss Shandy turned back to the whiteboard on which she had written two words in tall letters, propaganda and summons dad. Now, said Miss Shandy, we discussed propaganda yesterday. Who can tell me what it is? So several kids raised their hands. Niles. Niles made a big show of not reading from his notes. Propaganda is the dissemination of doctrines and political ideas through art and culture. Good, Niles, said Miss Shandy. Propaganda can take the form of a book, of a movie, a book, or a play, a song, a painting, or a poster. But whereas art is an attempt to uncover the truth, Propaganda promotes a party line. It maintains order. It instills in us those ideas that people want us to believe. Niles wrote all this down. So, said Miss Shandy, Samus Dot. She smiled at the class. What the heck is that? Students chuckled. Nobody? Any guesses? Where do you think the word comes from? Holly? It looks Russian? That's right, said Miss Shandy. Samus Dot comes from the Soviet Union. It means self-publishing. Russian writers, intellectuals, and dis dissidents used to, used to secretly make and pass around literature that the government, the state, wouldn't allow. It sort of sounds like salami dots, said Stuart, like those white dots in salami. Well, said Miss Shandy, some thought often contained ideas that challenged authority, so the authorities made this writing illegal. Like me and my chips, said Josh. No, Josh, said Miss Shandy. The reason you can't eat chips in class is because it's distracting to students and to me, and because you get orange dust all over your assignments, which is disgusting. The Soviet state believed Salman Dot was a threat to its very existence. Sorry, Josh, but your chips aren't that important. Disagree, said Josh. Miss Shandy went over to her desk and pulled out a pamphlet. The cover was gray and adorned with strange letters. This is an actual piece of Salman Dot, a book of poems by a writer named Alexei Kos Vostenko. She handed it to Holly. You can carefully pass that around. Josh, if you want to hold it, go wash your hands. That's it? Josh asked, standing up to look at the book. That's so flimsy. Samistat chicks had limited resources. Remember, they had to print the, these books themselves and smuggle them to readers. Samistat is about the ideas inside, or really even about the idea of Samistat itself. Holly passed the book to Niles, who carefully examined each page, even though he couldn't read it. Miss Shandy continued, a lot of Samizdat wasn't even political writing, but just the very fact that it existed, that rebels were making these books, that people could engage in this activity forbidden by the state, that was a threat to power. Cool, said Holly. And now, said Miss Shandy, I'd like everyone to get into their work groups. The room was filled with metallic squeals as students scooted their chairs and rearranged their desks into groups of three. We're going to once again imagine that this room is organized by a system of government, said Miss Shandy. This was one of her favorite exercises. Already this year, Room 22 had been a direct democracy, a theocracy, a republic, and an oligarchy. For the next two days, said Miss Shandy, we will be living in a totalitarian state. Sweet, said Josh. Now you will need to decide in your groups whether you are going to be propagandists or Sami's Dutchics. And you will be making either a propaganda poster or a piece of summons dot. So figure it out. Will you be the ruling party or the underground? Ruling party, Josh Barkin told his groupmates, Janice Neeser and Stuart. I sort of thought it would be fun to make summons dot, said Janice Neeser. Josh shook his head. No way, Nimbuses, we're the ruling party. Who made you present, said Janice Neeser. I did, said Josh. 
He checked to see if Miss Shandy was looking and put his cap back on. I'm President Barkett, and this is the ruling party. We rule, said Stuart. Meanwhile, Holly was talking to Niles and Miles. Okay, I guess we should put this to a vote, she said. I say Thomas Dot. Thomas Dot, said Miles. Thomas Dot, said Niles. Really? Holly looked at him impressed. I thought for sure you'd be a propagandist. Miss Shandy dinged the silver bell she kept on her desk. Ding, ding, ding. Listen up, she said. By now you should have made your decisions. Here's the twist. Propagandists, you will have full access to the art supplies and the classroom computers. Sami's dot chicks, you can use only these. She held up a basket of old pencils. Many were chewed and none had erasers. Half the class groaned. Oh. Boom, said Josh. Told you, Janice. Power rules. Now that you know the materials you're working with, it's time to decide what you're going to make. Plan carefully. Miss Shandy looked at the clock. We have about 15 minutes today, and you'll have some more time tomorrow. Miss Shandy walked around the room, absorbing the humming of students in conversation. What if we made a poem, a book of poems, Holly said. I can't really write poems, said Miles. Okay, then, like a magazine, said Holly. Nearby, Josh was leaning back in his chair. Janice, you're good at drawing. Can you draw chips? What? Chips. I'm seeing a poster with a big bag of chips, and it says, President Barkin says, it's a medical issue. Don't faint, eat chips. Do you know how to draw a doctor? I guess, said Janice Teaser. And the doctor should have a chip for a head, said Josh. That's genius, said Stuart. After 15 minutes, the bell rang. Backpack zipped, three ring binders clicked, and the students marched out of the room, out the door of room 22. When the room was empty, Principal Barkin marched in. Hello, Bertrand, said Miss Shandy. Hello, Miss Shandy, said Principal Barkin. And may I remind you to address me as Principal Bar Bar Barkin? I thought I was just in front of students, said Miss Shandy. It wasn't, said Principal Barkin. Now I hope you don't mind, but I was observing your class this morning through the window of the back door. I don't mind, said Miss Shandy, although you were welcome to come in and observe. Principal Barkin smiled. I prefer to do my observations in secret. I find people change their behavior when they know I'm watching. Right. Watching them. Right, said Miss Shandy. She looked at the clock. By now, there will be a line for the microwave in the teacher's lounge. I wanted to get a look at your teaching, said Principal Warkin, but I didn't see any teaching. Excuse me? From what I observed, you did a lot of walking around while students chatted. We're working on a group project, said Miss Shandy. Principal Warkin made a face like he just bitten down on an olive pit. A group project? That's right. They're learning from each other. Miss Shandy, said Principal Warkin. They're children. What do they have to teach each other? Seriously? I believe that I was asking a rhetorical question, said Principal Markham. When I was a teacher, which I'll admit, he gave an insincere chuckle, <laughs> was a long time ago, students learned from teachers. I held the knowledge and I engraved it into onto their soft minds. Times have changed, said Miss Shandy. And now they're changing back said the principal Barkin. I witnessed pandemonium in here, and I will not have pandemonium in my classrooms. Pandemonium, said Miss Shandy. She checked the clock again. Listen, I have to go heat up my soup. Of course, said Prince Barkin. I'm sorry to keep you. Go enjoy your lunch. Miss Shandy slung her tote over her shoulder and grabbed her, her keys. Great talk, she said. Oh, this talk is not over, said Prince Barkin. Please come visit my office during your prep period. The next day, Miss Shandy lectured for the full 45 minutes. There was no time devoted to, to group work. Propaganda and Sami's dot were never mentioned again.